российские флаг, флаги ЧВК Лангер снять. Russian media Mozem Obiasnit reports the end of Wagner PMC. Wagner PMC will no longer exist. This is the decision of the chief. Prigozhin's PMC has ceased to exist. Most of its mercenaries will go to Shuaigu. Wagner PMC that didn't exist on paper has now been closed as an unofficial armed formation as well. This was reported to the project We Can Explain by four sources. An official close to the presidential administration, an interlocutor close to the PMC, and two veterans of Wagner. The decision to liquidate Wagner in Russia is final and was made personally by Vladimir Putin, says a source close to the presidential administration in the Ministry of Defense. There will be no Wagner in Russia. This is the decision of chief. They will not be in Molkino either. Defense ministry contractors and fighters of other PMCs will remain there, he claims. About the fact that Prigozhin's mercenaries will no longer be in Molkino, says another source of the Ministry of Defense close to this PMC, right now, several thousand fighters are indeed moving out of Molkino. Now the process of separation of Wagner is underway, says a fighter of this PMC. According to him, the authorities offer everyone to sign contracts with the Ministry of Defense. Of those who have made their decision, most of the rank-and-file Prigozhin mercenaries have decided to go to Shoigu's ministry. The project interlocutor did not provide specific figures. But a Wagner veteran, who has been fighting in this formation for more than five years, told the Ministry of Defense, The most experienced of his infantrymen remained with Prigozhin, and no one is going to take them under the wing of the defense ministry. In Russia, recruitment for Wagner PMC has been stopped. The correspondent of the Ministry of Defense was convinced. Most of the company's phones for recruiting new employees are unavailable. Two numbers play the message, wait for connection with the operator. But for five minutes, it still does not happen. Wagner's foreman, nicknamed Bavaretz, is also unavailable. He doesn't answer either by phone or in messengers, although he used to be available almost around the clock. Most groups in Russian social media Volkontakta, dedicated to Wagner PMC, are blocked at the request of the Prosecutor General's office. Several hundred Wagner fighters are already in Belarus, but they are practically disarmed, another PMC veteran says. They did surrender equipment to the Ministry of Defense. Not all of it, but 90%, for sure, he said. Lithuanian National Defense Minister Arvidas Anushauskas said roughly the same thing the other day. I wouldn't call them units. I would call them groups that are transferred to Belarus without weapons, ammunition, and logistics. The number is small, Anusauskas claimed. Monitoring group Belaruski Gayun reported that a column of Wagnerites was traveling to a tent camp in the village of Seal. According to its data, today Prigozhin's plane landed at the military airfield in Machulishchi. Another excellent BBC report. After the attack on the Kerch Bridge, Russian newspapers encouraging readers to go ahead with summer holidays in occupied Crimea, suggesting a 250 miles detour to get there, but warning against too many stops along the way. The sides of the road could be mined. Coming up in today's Russian papers, advice for Russian tourists on how to get to Crimea, but careful of mines along the way. And reaction to Russia suspending its participation in the Black Sea grain deal. Yesterday's attack on the Kerch Bridge dominates today's papers here. The headline in the government paper, Rasiska Gazeta, despicable strike. The Ukrainian special services hit the Crimea Bridge with drones. A husband and wife were killed, their daughter injured. President Putin's threat, they will answer for the terrorist attack. Moskovsky Kamsomorets asks why the bridge was vulnerable to drones. Now, in the light of yesterday's attack on the bridge and recent drone strikes on the peninsula, you may conclude that Crimea, which Russia seized from Ukraine in 2014, isn't exactly the safest place for a summer holiday right now. But the ultra-pro-Kremlin Komsomolskoye Pravda claims that Russian tourists aren't rushing to cancel their holidays in Crimea, and it gives advice on how to reach the resorts of Crimea without using the Kerch Bridge. Here's a handy map of an alternative route to Crimea 
a 400-kilometer detour through Russian-occupied Ukraine, Mariupol, Berdyansk, Primorsk, Melitopol. That's quite a journey. Still, as the Moscow-installed head of the Russia-occupied part of Ukraine's Donetsk region points out, to tourists who will be travelling through the self-proclaimed DNR, at least the curfew has been temporarily lifted. Comforting. Kamsomolets reports that along this route, tourists going by car have been advising one another to fill up with petrol in advance, and stock up with food, and if possible, go to the toilet in such a way that you won't need to go again for a long time, since along the highway there is no infrastructure and pit stops could be dangerous, the curbs could be mined. Not exactly the perfect start to a summer holiday. As for the UN-brokered grain deal in which Russia has suspended its participation, Komersant's headline, Moscow has pulled out of the Istanbul agreements but hasn't ruled out a return, and Yezavisa Gazeta concludes that the attack on the Kerch Crimean bridge left Russia no choice. If it had shown goodwill over the grain deal, that would have looked like unacceptable weakness on Moscow's part. The question now is what the practical consequences of this decision will be. And after the story that the Russians have amassed 100,000 soldiers for the offensive on Kremina, the commander of the ground forces of the armed forces of Ukraine, Sirsky says that the situation in the east is difficult, but under control. The occupiers are shifting reserves towards Bakhmut, and they want to stop the advance of our defenders. The enemy has its main forces in concentrated towards Kupiansk, where the Ukrainian armed forces are holding the defense. And let's see the Ukrainian Olympic hacky sack team. A Ukrainian soldier play with a very rare animal, marbled polecat living near its position. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.